So the first thing to know about photosynthesis is that there's two stages. There's stage one, which is the light dependent reactions. And then there's stage two, which we call the light independent reactions. So we're gonna start by talking about stage one. So the first thing that happens in stage one is that chloroplasts capture light energy and convert it into chemical energy. So you're probably wondering right now, what exactly is a chloroplast? So let me show you. So this big complex looking thing, this is a picture of a chloroplast, and it's absolutely not necessary to know what all this stuff is. So I'm gonna be breaking down photosynthesis and I'm gonna tell you exactly what you need to know. So we're gonna simplify it so that you don't have to memorize excess details here. But this is just a picture of what a chloroplast is. But basically just know that it's an organelle inside of plant cells. That's all it is. And if you're not sure what an organelle is, just remember that it's a chloroplast, it's just something that you find inside of a plant cell. All right, so the second thing to know about the chloroplast, besides the fact that it's found in a plant cell, is that it contains chlorophyll. And chlorophyll is just a pigment that makes plants look green, simply put. So you also need to know about the chloroplast that it contains the chlorophyll and that this chlorophyll in the chloroplast captures light energy. So we see this picture here and we see the sun. And what I want you to see here is that the leaf is reflecting the green light, right? And it's absorbing the red and blue light. So if you ever wondered why plants look green to us, it's because they absorb the other colors of light, but they reflect that green light which is why when we see them, we see that they're green. So now let's talk about stage two, which we call the light independent reactions. So the first part that happens in stage two is that water and carbon dioxide, also known as CO2, undergo reactions inside of the chloroplast. And the second thing to know is that these reactions make oxygen, and glucose. So the abbreviation for oxygen is O2 and the abbreviation for glucose is C6H12O6. So let me show you a picture to help you identify what's going on here. So in this picture right here what we see is sunlight and we see carbon dioxide from the air and we see water in the soil and we know that they're gonna to react to make oxygen and glucose. And here it says carbohydrates. So now let's look at the equation for photosynthesis. And this is a common equation and you're likely to see something like this on your test. But it's just, again, it's just showing you here that carbon dioxide and water are gonna react in the presence of light and they're gonna make glucose and oxygen. Now, I know somebody might be wondering why are we interchanging the words glucose, carbohydrates, and sugar? Because remember, at first, in this slide here, I told you that the reaction makes oxygen and glucose. Then I showed you a picture and I said that the products of the reaction are oxygen and carbohydrates. Then I showed you another equation here and, I'm, and now it says that sugar and oxygen are the products. So what's the difference between glucose, carbohydrates, and sugar? Well. What I want you to know here is that you might see these words, carbohydrate, sugar, and glucose, shown to you interchangeably, right? So on your test, they're probably going to show it to you as glucose, but just know that they also might say sugar or they might say carbohydrate. So I just wanted you to see the different uses of the word here, how they might show the equation, but just think of them as being interchangeable here. All right. So now, let me show you why, the, why they're used interchangeably. So, first of all, when it comes to carbohydrates, you have to know that carbohydrates contain sugar molecules. And there's two main types of carbohydrates. There's simple carbs and complex carbs. Now, the main difference is that simple carbs have only one or two sugar molecules. And complex carbs have three or more sugar molecules. So, we see here, here's the carbohydrates and we see the two divisions between simple carbs and complex carbs. Now, what we see here, we have monosaccharides and disaccharides. And 
The word saccharide, it comes from a Greek word that means sugar. So think of saccharide as meaning sugar. So we see here monosaccharide. Mono meaning one, saccharide meaning sugar. So monosaccharide is one sugar. Here we see disaccharides. Di means two, so disaccharides means two sugars. And the same with polysaccharides, except that poly means many. So we see here polysaccharides, think of that as meaning many sugars. And the key here to see is that glucose is a type of monosaccharide. So hopefully now you see why sometimes we call it glucose, sometimes they say sugar, and sometimes they say carbs. But I just wanted to explain the differences here so that you see it. Now, what you won't need to know about carbohydrates is that we can digest simple carbs faster than complex carbs, right? And the reason is because, again, simple carbs don't have as many sugar molecules, so it's easier for the body to break them down. Now, simple carbs are, for example, what you get from a chocolate bar. So I'm sure you've had that experience where you've eaten a chocolate bar, or you've had some candy or something with a lot of sugar in it, and you get that temporary burst of energy, and then you feel worse maybe 30 to 40 minutes later, right? You get that sugar rush, and then unfortunately you get that sugar cr crash. Now, actually there's research showing some scientists don't believe that this is a real thing. Some scientists, they say that the sugar rush, it's, it's not a real thing. Uh, they don't believe in it. They just say that we eat sugar, we eat simple sugars, and then 30 to 40 minutes later we crash and we have fatigue and we feel terrible and we don't actually get that rush. Um, but, you know, personally I've experienced sugar rushes. I'm sure you have too. Uh, but just note that, you know, some scientists don't believe sugar rushes are a real thing. They just think you get that crash. But my experience contradicts that and I'm sure yours might too. And also, Think about complex carbs as giving you longer lasting energy. So something that has complex carbs would be like a banana, for example, right? So complex carbs, they are going to raise your blood glucose levels for longer and they give you more sustained energy than the simple carbs, right? So your body breaks down most carbs into glucose, which then goes into your bloodstream. Right, and so when we hear people talk about blood sugar, what they're really talking about is blood glucose, right? So blood sugar levels and blood glucose levels, they're the same thing. So again, you eat something that has carbohydrates and your body's gonna break down most of those carbs into glucose, which then goes into your bloodstream. So what do you think happens to it next? Well, there's a hormone called insulin and insulin tells your cells to remove the glucose from your bloodstream. So you can think about insulin like a key. So think of insulin as the key that unlocks your cells and opens the door for your cells to take the insulin in from your bloodstream. Or I'm sorry, not to take the insulin in. Insulin is the key that opens the cells so that the cells can take the glucose in from your bloodstream. Okay, so once glucose enters the cell, your body can either use it for instant energy it can also store it for later as a carb, which we would then call glycogen, or it can store it as fat. So these are the three things that can happen after you eat something with carbohydrates. And again, remember, it gets broken down into glucose, then the hormone insulin opens up the cell, the glucose goes into the cell, and the body can then do one of these three things with it. Now, the body has limited storage capacity for carbohydrates. So the excess carbs from your diet unfortunately get stored as fat. So you may have heard people talk about low carb diets. Uh, they've been trendy for a little while now. Um, for example, like the Atkins diet or the keto diet. And the basic, basically the strategy behind these diets is that again, your body has limited storage for the carbs and excess carbs get stored as fat. So the theory behind these diets is that if you cut the amount of carbohydrates that you're taking in, you're gonna lose weight, you're gonna lose body fat. Now, now this is not nutrition advice. I'm not a medical doctor and I'm not a nutrition expert. And note that the doctors and experts have mixed opinions on low carb diets about whether or not they're healthy for you. But I just wanted to draw this connection here between low carb diets that we sometimes hear about in the news, or maybe you know people that have tried them, or maybe you've tried them. But I just wanted to make that connection to what we're learning about here. So now we get back to this photosynthesis equation with that out of the way. And what I want to break down is the chemistry of what's going on here a little bit. So whenever you see a chemical equation like this, 
think of the arrow in the middle, it's kind of like an equal sign in math. So that's not exactly the best way to think about it, but I think it's helpful to illustrate kind of what's going on here. So we're taking these two things on the left-hand side of the reaction, our carbon dioxide and our water, and everything on the left-hand side of the reaction we call the reactants. And so these are going to react and in, in the presence of light, and they're going to form sugar or glucose and oxygen. And these are our products. So everything on the right-hand side of this equation are what we call products. So think about it this way. This is one way to help you remember it, especially if you're a visual person, right? So basically, think about photosynthesis. Think of the word sun whenever you think of photosynthesis, or I should say light, rather, because think about photo. It sounds like you're taking a picture, right? And to take a picture, you need light. You either have to be in a room or outside where there's light, or if you're in a dark place, you use your flash. So that word photosynthesis, think of this image of the sun. Right now, if your car is out on ice, so if you're driving and you hit a patch of ice, you don't want to go over that ice, right? So, so look at carbon dioxide here. So the first three letters of carbon dioxide, they make up the word car, all right? And now think about water, right? So that ice, it's just frozen water, all right? So if the sun melts that ice, then you can drive because you don't want to be driving on that ice. But just imagine that this is like a road somewhere and there's ice on it. You don't want to drive on that ice, so the sun has to melt that ice. Then the car can go. Now, so all you have to do, photosynthesis, picture that sun, then picture the car, and picture that car on the ice here. And that's going to help you remember that what's happening is that carbon dioxide is reacting with water in the presence of light and G and O spell the word go, right? Glucose and oxygen. So remember the word go. So remember, you need, when the car is going to drive over ice, you need that sunlight for the car to go. All right, hopefully this makes sense. And, you know, so to think about photosynthesis, to think about these reactants, you, one way to do it, just remember that word photosynthesis, picture that light, and then picture the car on the ice, and remember that it's carbon dioxide, and water reacting in the presence of light, and that makes the car go, go, G-O, glucose and oxygen. So if this just confused you even more, then don't worry about it, but for some people out there that are visual and like to think in pictures, this can hopefully be a way to remember what's happening in photosynthesis. And I know it's silly and I know it's goofy, but sometimes these goofy little ways to remember things help make it stick the most. So now let's move ahead here and let's do some practice questions. And question one says, where does photosynthesis take place in plants? So go ahead, think about it, and you can pause the video or you can rewind it and you can go back and rewatch part of the video if you're not sure. So let's go over this one and the answer is B, chloroplast. So this is just one of those you kind of know it or you don't type of questions, but basically just remember this, that photosynthesis takes place in the part of the plant called the chloroplast. Okay, question two. Which of the following is a product of photosynthesis? Water, carbon dioxide, oxygen, and then we have answer choice D, and I know you guys are all champions, no one's gonna quit, so answer D is just here for fun, because I know no one's gonna give up, but think about this, and you can pause the video if you need to, and then we'll go over the, what the answer is. Okay, so let me go over this, hopefully you had a chance to think about this here. And the answer is C, right? So if we look at the equation here, remember oxygen is one of our products, along with sugar, also known as glucose, also known as carbohydrates for the purposes of the GED test here. Question three, carbon dioxide and water react in the presence of blank to produce oxygen and glucose. So pause the video, try to figure this out, and then we'll go over it. Okay, so let's go over this one. So remember from our equation here, carbon dioxide and water react in the presence of light to produce oxygen and glucose. Okay, question four. Carbon dioxide and blank react in the presence of light to produce oxygen and glucose. So fill in the blank, go ahead, think about it, pause the video, and we'll go over it. Okay, so the answer here is water. So again, remember, Carbon dioxide and water react in the presence of light to produce oxygen and glucose. You really can't hear that enough times because every time you hear it, 
right, you're gonna hopefully remember it more and more for your test. Okay, so now we're gonna step up the difficulty just a little bit. I think everyone watching this video is more than capable of figuring this question out. Um, but if you do have trouble, don't worry about it, we'll go over it. So let's move on to question five, which will require a little more critical thinking. And this is a similar question in difficulty to what you can expect on the GED test. So it says here, scientists believe that increased amounts of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is contributing to climate change. Which of the following methods would likely help reduce atmospheric carbon dioxide levels the most? A. Digging up more plants. B. Planting more green plants. C. Cooking with less sugar. Or D. I have no idea. Pause the video, think about this, and then we'll go over it. So the answer here is B, planting more green plants. So just think, more plants means more photosynthesis, which means more of that carbon dioxide is going to get used up in that reaction. Okay, question six here. Patients with diabetes type one must manage their condition with insulin injections. Diabetes type one is characterized by which of the following? A, blood sugar levels that are too high, or B, blood sugar levels that are too low. Pause the video, think about it, and then we'll go over it. Okay, let's go over this. So the answer is A. So think about insulin and what it does here, right? So remember, I said that insulin, it's like the key that unlocks cells so that they can take in glucose from the bloodstream. And if the body is not making enough insulin, well, then the glucose, it's not gonna be stored, right? The blood sugar levels are gonna stay high, all right? So you just have to remember what insulin does here. And if you got this question right, then phenomenal job because this is a tricky question. And if you didn't, then great work for trying and congratulate yourselves anyway for being here and trying your best to make progress towards the GED. And I know that you are making progress even though it might not always feel like it. Okay, question seven. When oxygen levels in a given area of a river drop, bass typically travel to water with higher oxygen levels. In general, which area of a river would be better for casting a fishing line to catch a bass? A. A part of the river without a patch of grass, or B. A part of the river with a patch of grass. So here's another critical thinking question here, and it's going to help you gain a deeper understanding or test if you have that deeper understanding that we're looking to give you here about photosynthesis. So pause the video, think about it, and then we'll go over it. Okay, let's go over it here. So the answer is B, a part of the river with a patch of grass. Now, bass like grassy areas in general because it gives them security. But the most important key that I'm looking for you to see here is that grass gives off a lot of oxygen from photosynthesis. Your next step, go check out my science video on how to answer graph questions. It's going to really help you get that skill mastered, and good luck with your test. Thank you for watching.